Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. In our haste to take the perfect shot, we sometimes unintentionally include a big unsightly object which you wish was not there. Luckily, Affinity Photo has perhaps the most number of tools of any photo editor for removing objects. But with a large quantity comes large confusion. So in this video, I'll be demonstrating how to remove large objects with four tools using two of my own badly taken images so we can find out which is the best tool. So let's get right into it. The first tool is the in-painting brush tool. With the in-painting brush tool, complex algorithms take over to harvest information from the surrounding areas of the image in order to reconstruct the missing data. The in-painting brush tool is the simplest to use as it does not require you to do any sampling. Affinity Photo recommends some best practices for the in-painting brush tool. The first is to make sure to set a suitable brush size from the context toolbar and you might have to do some trial and error for this to get the best results. You can do multiple passes if the result of the in-painting does not look authentic or seamless enough. Just simply paint over the areas again. Alright, so let's begin using the in-painting brush tool. It is the most straightforward to use. You simply select a suitable brush size and brush over the large object. Affinity will do the job of analyzing the surroundings and creating an image to cover up the area. As you can see though, for this object, Affinity has problems replicating the detail on the floor. If things don't work well, you can try brushing again with a different brush size. And as you can see, while the result is not perfect, it is definitely better. For the second image, the in-painting brush works even better as the object has more space around it, allowing me to use a larger brush, which seems to be more beneficial for the in-painting brush. I was able to recover the detail in the cabinet adequately. That being said, there is some slight discoloration that I'm observing but all in all, it's a very good result. The next tool is the healing brush tool. The healing brush tool samples from one part of an image onto another. It blends the target pixels with the sample pixels by matching the texture, tone, and transparency of the sample pixels with the target pixels. To define the cloning source, hold the Alt and click on the area you wish to begin sampling from. You can also use the arrow keys to scale or rotate the source image or the sample image. So now let's begin using the healing brush tool. Unlike the in-painting brush tool, which works automatically and you can brush off the unsightly object directly, the healing brush tool requires you to select a source point by pressing the Alt-Click combination and the image under that source point will be used to replace the target image. To replace the target image, just simply click over it. As mentioned in the description, the healing brush tool involves blending the sample onto the target image. Unfortunately, because the floor, which is what we're sampling, and the foot, which we are removing, are very dissimilar in tone and color, the healing brush is unable to blend the two images properly resulting in visible artifacts and discoloration such that the object is not completely removed. For the second image, the sample and the target are closer together in tone and color, and as such, the healing brush does a better job, even though artifacts and discoloration are still visible. The third tool is the patching tool. The patching tool is used to replace an undesirable pixel region with a patch, which is a drawn freehand selection area made up of pixels sourced from a more suitable part of your image. Just like the healing brush tool, you can use the arrow keys to scale or rotate the source image. Patching, like healing, blends the target pixels with the sample pixels by matching the texture, tone, and transparency of the sample pixels 
with the target pixels. So let's begin using the patch tool. As mentioned, the patch tool is unique in that it allows for freehand selection, which might make it more efficient in removing irregularly shaped objects. For large objects though, I would recommend making selections in smaller sizes so that it's easier to find a suitable sample image to replace the target image with. Unfortunately for this case, the patch tool behaves like the healing brush in that it also performs blending. As demonstrated previously, blending gives inferior results when the sample and target image look very dissimilar. Just like the healing brush, the patch tool works better on the second image but still leaves some discoloration from the blending process. The final tool we are going to be testing is the clone tool. The clone tool is used to paint samples from one part of an image onto another. It is useful for removing defects, general photo retouching, and duplicating parts of an image. Use the arrow keys to scale or rotate the source image. Unlike the healing brush tool, the clone tool does not blend the target image with the source image. So let's use the clone tool now. And it works exactly like the healing brush tool in that you also alt click to sample and click to replace the source image. It differs though with the healing brush in the important aspect that it does not perform blending. That means if you use a hard brush like I'm doing here, the pasting of the image might not look natural. So for the clone tool, it's recommended that you change your brush to use a softer brush as I have done here. Also for large objects, I do recommend to do cloning in smaller pieces instead of doing it in one big step. And that is so that it would be easier to find a higher quality sample image to replace the source image with. So there you have it, four object removal tools from Affinity. Which one is the best? If it was not obvious from the demo, I would go with the clone tool at number one, followed by the in painting brush tool at number two. I would skip the healing brush tool and patch tool altogether unless the clone tool for some reason was not giving the results you want. Personally though, I've never found such a case. I believe in all cases the clone tool will work better, but do let me know in the comments which tool you prefer for removing larger objects and which techniques do you use. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. And till the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.